Hey eScholars, it's good to be back with you. And this is in another in a series of videos about mathematics. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what software is available for number crunching. Now this is a huge possible topic. If you uh, do a quick Google search, you will find out there are approximately a squillion different software packages out there. Now, I want to give you a disclaimer. There's only one of me. I've only used some of them. This is pretty much the ones I know about. If I have forgotten your favorite one, I apologize. Uh, feel free to politely put a note in the uh, comments to this video and maybe include a URL so other people can find out about the software as well. There's so many packages out there, we kind of need a way to uh, categorize them. One way to do it is to kind of look at how they're intended, how they're implemented. One is a, a computational software that's really built around a programming language. One is where there's a, the primary feature is kind of the user interface. And the last one is just general purpose software. It'll do anything, including number crunching. So here's a very, an admittedly very incomplete list, but this is the one I can tell you about. And I think it's probably, uh, there's enough of a spread here, you can get a feel for what's available. Now, MATLAB is the big one. MATLAB's the one everybody knows about. It's been around for quite a while now, decades for sure. And the early versions look to me like Super Duper Fortran. A long time ago, roughly a thousand years ago, when the dinosaurs were crawling out of the oceans, I learned Fortran on punch cards. I don't recommend it. And I learned, uh, once I learned MATLAB, I never wrote any Fortran again. It was great. It was much more, more easy to use than Fortran. It was a lot easier to debug. It was a lot more capable. Um, since then, it's evolved quite a bit, and there are the number of uh, commercial and uh, publicly available toolboxes, collections of routines, is very, very large. The company that publishes it has very, very good user support and there's a huge user base around the world. Um, it's tough to go wrong uh, settling on MATLAB. Now there's a little bit of programming involved, but it's not too bad. And what you get in turn is um, broad capabilities. It's very powerful and a very large user base that you can tap into. It's always easy to get help with MATLAB because everybody uses it. I imagine some large percentage of the number crunching in the world probably happens on MATLAB. Now I've got Octave here in parentheses. Octave is a freeware alternative to MATLAB. Now I don't think it was meant originally to compete with MATLAB, but it uses a similar enough syntax that uh, code that'll run on one of them may run on the other one. Now this is available for free, and you know, free is a pretty good price. I should point out that if you're a student, the student license for MATLAB is very reasonable. Um, at this uh, time I'm shooting this video, which is July 2019, there are really two student versions. There's one real cheap one, and it's 50 or $60. And it's a very stripped down, very basic version of MATLAB. The other one is about $110 or so, and it includes some toolboxes. In MATLAB land, toolboxes are collections of functions that are so useful it's worth writing code specifically to do them. And the $110 version, I think, includes something like five toolboxes. If you're a student, if you can afford that extra 50 bucks, definitely get the $105, $110 version. You'll be glad you did. It's cheaper than a book. Okay, the controversial one on this list is probably MathCAD. MathCAD has decent number crunching abilities, but it's really built around the interface. The interface looks like kind of a scratch pad. It's programming, but it doesn't really look or feel like programming. It looks and feels like you're just writing things down, and MATLAB is or MathCAD is evaluating them. By the way, terrible name. Doesn't have anything to do with CAD. I don't know why they picked this name. Um, it's not especially popular, but I've been using it for, oh gosh, coming on to 30 years now and I'm very, very pleased with it. If I have any beef with MathCAD at all, it's sometimes difficult to buy. The company that uh, publishes MathCAD uh, publishes a lot of other large engineering packages, and uh, my opinion is that they're probably set up more to deal with big corporate and uh, university customers. They don't seem to quite know what to do when a single person comes to them. You can eventually work through it, but you're gonna have to I should say this correctly. I've always had to jump through quite a few hoops to finally get the license working. Now, once it works, it's great. Now, another feature of MathCAD that's nice is they've got something called MathCAD Express. Now, Express is a fully functional version of MathCAD that works for 30 days. Now, at the end of 30 days, you either buy the uh, full version 
or you can uh, it, it reverts to a, a more stripped down and more reduced set of features. If you're a student, this is pretty cheap. At this, again, publication date, it's $56. That's a good deal. Now, if you're a commercial user, it's quite a bit more than that. If you explore MathCAD, you're going to find out there's basically two versions of it floating around. There's a legacy version, which is called version 15. Development on that stopped uh, several years ago. And there's a newer version called MathCAD Prime. We're up to MathCAD Prime 5 now as I'm shooting this video. There's some debate among the user community about which is the preferred one to use. By the time we get to Prime 6, that's probably going to be it. Though that there probably won't be a compelling reason to use version 15. So if you see V15 versus Prime 5, that's what's going on. Oh boy, Excel. We use it because we have it. It comes with Office. Everybody's got it. Or if you don't have Excel, you've got some other spreadsheet package on Google uh, Office or something. Um, guys, this isn't number crunching. I mean, it kind of is, but not really. This isn't an engineering package. This is, was built for accountants, and it's very good. It's got a lot of great capabilities. Um, we don't use this because this is the preferred uh, tool for technical calculations. We use it because we have it, and it's mostly free or effectively free. Um, if you insist on doing complicated stuff in Excel, absolutely you can do it. You can write macros. If you want to do enough programming, you can do anything with this. You could probably control the warp drive on the Starship Enterprise with Excel if you wanted to. How bad do you want to? All right. Could you do a Fourier transform in Excel? Yes, you can. There is an FFT function in Excel. Go ahead and figure it out. You know what the FFT function in MATLAB looks like? FFT return. That's it. You know what the one in MathCAD looks like? About the same. Right? So you can use this if you want to. My own opinion is we, we spend way too much time trying to do technical calculations in Excel. In my classes, unless it's just for homework and things, for projects and stuff, I don't let them use this. It's just, it, it, there's just too many other good choices around to hamstring yourself with this. If you want to make plots, if you want to do lightweight stuff, go ahead. If you want to do really technical stuff, really in-depth stuff, and you don't mind really working for it, go ahead. It's probably not the best use of your time. Okay, so these are kind of, I don't know, the big three, the three I use the most. Here's some more. Wolfram Alpha. Well, Wolfram Alpha is free, and it's in a web browser. That's great. You can just ask it a question, and it'll just tell you. That's great. How do you program this? There is a Wolfram language that you can program in. Unclear to me whether you can actually execute that in Alpha. I suspect you probably can. And Alpha is kind of an, a, a, a partner to Mathematica. Now, Mathematica is probably the, 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 one of the most capable pieces of mathematical calculation software out there anywhere. It's very, very powerful, very, very capable. Um, if you get good at this, you can do darn near anything, I would think if you get good at it. The problem is this comes with a little bit of lead time. There's some spool up time trying to figure out how to program this. It doesn't look like a normal programming language or an old fashioned programming language like that does. I had no problem picking this up. This is going to take some dedicated effort. In return, what you get is the ability to do just about any calculation you can imagine. So check out Mathematico. Now, Maple is another one of these uh, packages it was originally developed to do uh, symbolic processing and then uh, eventually moved on so it'll handle uh, numerical processing as well. It's out there. Again, if you want to learn to do the programming, you can. I, I, don't, I, I don't know any reason not to other than I haven't met a lot of Maple users. There have to be a bunch. I just haven't met them. Now, what about just plain old programming languages? Why don't you just do all your number crunching in C++++++ or Python or whatever your favorite programming language is? Go ahead. Absolutely, go ahead. The problem is these languages are designed to do everything. So if you want to do number crunching in this, you're going to have to learn the, the, uh, the specialized parts of it that, that you need. Um, and the other one is if you're not writing production code, if you're just trying to do a specific project, homework assignment, something like that. This comes with a lot of lead time, a lot of overhead. 
Now I suspect a lot of very good computational software is written in these, it almost has to be. But if you're a student, a professor, you know, you've got a specific project you're just trying to get done, this may not be your best choice. Again, it's like any of these others. If you spend the time to get good at it, these can be very, very powerful. But boy, you're starting from bare bones if you decide to do it this way. Well, I guess we're, no list was complete without graphing calculator. Um, graphing calculator is pretty much the only device I can think of that we use for what it won't do rather than what it will do. The one thing you can't do yet on graphing calculators is you can't go on the internet with them. And without that, there's no reason to use one. You can replace it with an app on your cell phone for a few dollars. The reason we use these is so propeller heads like me can give quizzes and tests and be assured that my students aren't out just web surfing for the answer, that the things they uh, turn in, the, the work they present is actually theirs. Can you do complex things in a graphing calculator? Yeah, you can, complicated. How hard are they to program? Well, you got this little tiny interface. Maybe you can plug them into your computer, but at that point, why aren't you using something else? Does anybody program these anymore? I guess they do. Um, I learned to program these a long time ago, and it was kind of like building a ship in a bottle, but you could do it. This is another one of those things. If you insist on doing, it with a, doing your calculations on a programming calculator, you'll probably be successful. It'll probably work. How hard do you want to work? There's lots, there's other easier ways to do what you need to do than this. Again, Once we solve that whole going on the web question, my guess is these will be replaced by a cell phone app. So let's stop there. This is, a, again, an incomplete list, but it's, it's, it's not a bad start. If you, if you consider all these and pick one or maybe a few off this list, you'll probably be okay. You'll probably be able to do what you need for projects, for homework, things like that. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.